Good morning. It is 2019 and I'm fired up. This is the first live that I've done of the year. So I've literally shaken off the last, oh gosh, it's been five weeks, actually six weeks. I've taken off the last six weeks of 2018. So last year I took off the last six weeks of the year. I went to the mall dives. I had this incredibly relaxing, almost too relaxing time that now I'm just like biting at the, the, at the bit to get going. And so when I thought about what is the best thing that I could bring to you at the beginning of the year, it really wasn't goal planning because I did that at the end of last year. And if you haven't done that yet, I'm going to recommend that if you want to set up this year, you're not behind yet. You need to eliminate all the thoughts that ever tell you you're behind in the game. That's like success, character, tip, whatever you want to call it. Um, number one, like you have got to manage your mind. You know, I've made, this is not a cup that says that, but I've made cups that say manage your mind to just literally like take over your space inside your house to manage your mind. Now this one says stay in the step you're in or focus on the step you're in, which I drink out of these on a regular basis to really just help me manage my mind. Even though my company doubles in size every year and I'm going to show you how I do it. It's like, I'm not any different than you. I have got, I, I fall off all the time. I, I literally, you know, I get afraid to declare certain goals. That's why I actually get up on stages and get on lives like this. And I say, I'm going to do this. Like for instance, I'm going to donate a million dollars this year to the San Diego area. That's my, that's my commitment. So that kind of scares me. I mean, that scares me. I'm not, I'm, I mean, I'm not used to donating seven figures. Trust me, I can spend that seven figures on a lot of other things. Like the fact that now my mom and I are talking about the fact that I'm going to be taking over her life and paying for like her living and things like that. And it's like, okay, now I got my mom and my dad, not on my payroll, but on my books of things that I take care of and they're not together. So that's two separate houses. That's you know, two separate grocery bills, that's two separate, you know, cable bills and phone bills and buying them cars. And I do all of that stuff. And it's so funny because when I remember when I started my business, all I thought was about myself. And this is why the game of business is all about generosity, not just generosity on like you and you like the more, like if you study any great person who teach you marketing, teaches you marketing, and we teach you about the funnels and the lead gens and all that stuff, you can learn every formula on the planet. But if you're like, I'm afraid to make a guarantee or because what if somebody takes advantage of me? And if you're all about I, 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 you're going to find that the business doesn't grow as fast. So, but like, forget that for a second. At some point, it will have nothing to do with you. At some point, you will have other things to take care of other than you. You will have spouses that lose their jobs. I've ha I, I like, I think I probably could safely say that I am the number one community for women. We do coach men, but for women who have retired their husbands from shitty ass jobs that they don't care about, that some of them didn't even know they didn't care about, that now they're doing things that they love. Our community has, in the last three years, has been on a ripple effect, almost a movement of powerful women just literally giving their husbands a break. You don't anticipate those things. I mean, maybe some of you do, but most of us don't. But I guarantee you that when I started my business, I wasn't thinking about taking care of my parents at all. My dad was a multimillionaire. He had drivers, cooks, all of those things. The last thing I ever thought about was my dad getting really sick with multiple different illnesses and losing everything. The last thing I ever thought about was that my mom, like, had a certain amount of income for retirement, but I never thought like she, she was a, sale, a furniture saleswoman her whole life. I never dawned on me to think about her future. And now I have, you know, a child and a husband and 19 employees and growing like crazy, blah, 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 right? So my point is, is that I'm going to share with you you know, a little bit about my planning and what I did for this year and even how I'm even tweaking it. Like I spent, so yesterday was my last day off before I started today. I'm back in the saddle today, ready to roar. And, and I'm ready to roar. Like I am really ready to roar this year. So you're going to get a lot of fire this year. And so, but, um, and it was my mom's last day here and she, she flew back to Canada 
at uh, six o'clock this morning. And so with all of that being said, I was able to balance spending half the day with her and enjoying her. Well, then she did some of her stuff and I got to focus on just tweaking my game for this year a little bit. And so I'll share with you what I did to actually prepare that. But I really want to have this live and it's going to end quick because I only go, I'm only going to go for about another 12 minutes. So we're going to cover a lot in 12 minutes. Um, that what do you do when you fall off? Because there are obvious moments in the year where both of us are going to think, you know, all of us are going to think, you know, is it really possible that I can hit that goal? And so I want to talk about that for a few moments. And really, I want that to be the biggest highlight. So first thing that I do is I do a bucket list. And I'm going to give you most of my steps because I don't have impact filters and things like that with me to go over, which is something Dan Sullivan taught me, which is great. But I'll give you like a highlight about what that means. And my clients, you know what I'm talking about. So I do a bucket list of all the things that I actually want, really want to do. And this is actually my bucket list. There's no fancy agenda or like whatever. There's, it's just a big old piece of paper that you can actually, anybody can grab and do. So I, I create a bucket list of all things I want to do because I want my life to be about fun. And I remember building a business and I remember being so damn intense that I couldn't ever get ahead because all I thought I had to do was work. You know what I'm talking about? Does anybody know what I'm talking about? If you know what I'm talking about, comment. Yes, I know the intensity. I've felt it. I am it. You know, like speak to me because I want to feel your energy this morning. So I was so intense that I could never get my company to ever get any fire to lift. Like there was never really any momentum. There were hopes and dreams and moments of like, oh, this is going to work. And then freaking A, the bottom would fall out and I would be like, there would be a bill that I couldn't pay. And it was just, it was mortifying a lot. But worst of all, it was hard on my uh, confidence that I could actually do it. So at one point, somebody took a picture of me. One of my mentors took a picture of me. Don't build a business alone. If you build a business alone, you are dangerously only operating within your comfort zone, even if you think you're not. All the work in the world, you can work as hard as you want and never get ahead. So working hard is not an actual like must to build an amazing business. I took off, I have taken off half the year, well, five months out of every year for the last three years in a row, and my business has doubled in size. Now, I want to tell you something. I don't want to do that anymore because I want to actually, I, I've broken my workaholism, and now I really want to amp it up more. So I actually am going to take off less time this year to be able to, um, we're going to look to, it works out, let me see. It's, I want to six times the company, but what we're actually doing right now is three times in the company. So a little under three times in the company. So, but I want to base it from fun, right? I want to base it from fun. So as I base it from fun, I start with a bucket list and I write all the things I would love to do and I don't edit myself. And so things like donate a million dollars to underprivileged children, um, Come uh, get qualified for a Netflix show, uh, do an online uh, tele-summit, video summit that we have 200,000 opt-ins. I have two partners on that that are rock stars. Um, this is another thing. Don't partner with people of equal uh, power as you. Partner with people who have wild success. And that might be easier said than done, but if you don't have friends that have wild success, then honestly, what the hell are you doing? You're probably hanging out with comfort zone people, people that you can add value to and you know you can. Trust me, you can add value to the most powerful. You can add value to Warren Buffett if you actually were yourself and we're generous. You will find something that you can help them with. And so stack up your friends because your mindset is a really big deal. I say to my clients all the time, I don't want to digress on this, but fuck, this drives me crazy. Excuse my language, but it drives me nuts. Do not hang out with people who complain. Do not. Like, do not. Like, you are not going to, if your friends are complaining, you are going to lose whatever game you're playing right now. Like, I tell this to my PACE program, my PACE members all the time, but yet there's still a group that freaking hang out together and they righteously fail together. And then there's a group that do six figures in six months and never had a business before. Like, hello, the program works, you know, like, just like, just don't do that. Okay. Hang out with only people. It's like Wayne Dyer. If you know of Wayne Dyer, say, yes, I know Wayne Dyer. Comment that because he's amazing. And I just want to throw energy into the universe for that man. Um, before Wayne Dyer died, he did not die 
um, of cancer, he, but he did get leukemia and he went to the hospital and they told, they diagnosed him with leukemia. And the doctor said, I, you are going to die. It's, it's incurable. And he said, you will never see me again. I, I saw him right after in Hawaii, right after he got, um, right after he got diagnosed. And he said, he literally said, you know, I just, I, I don't know if I'm going to cure myself, but I'm going to focus on curing myself. And then he's like, actually, I'm going to cure myself. And I remember my conversation with him because he said, but I will never go back to the person who doesn't think that they can cure me. So why do you think if you hang out with people who are complaining or edifying the fact that something's not working, that your things are going to turn around? If you want to be a great entrepreneur, you solve the freaking things not working. You do not say it doesn't work. And so I'm going to like just jump ship and change the plan. No. No, you need to actually stick to your word and you need to complete what it is that you want to complete. You need to find a way to keep your word to yourself. Every time you make a declaration, a goal, a business decision, you need to hit it. You start a program, freaking rock it, rock it. You know, I still have something on my vision board that says, that says, so I'm going to do 20 million this year. I'm actually feeling like I need to put that as 35, but I don't know if you can see it. Where's the baby? Where's the baby? Okay, the baby, there's the baby. <laughs> the baby's right there. It's been on my vision board for two years. I don't let go of it. I don't let go of the vision board. I don't let go of the goal. Just because I haven't hit it yet doesn't mean I'm a failure. Doesn't mean that my system doesn't work. Doesn't mean that, you know, I'm too old or I'm not. It's none of that. That's all the shit that the limiting believers that never have huge. You find me someone who makes $20 million a year or even someone who makes, well, no, I'm going to say $20 million a year because I still know a lot of people who make three and $5 million a year that have limiting beliefs, but they have less than the ones that make 200 thousand they got less so the game is eliminating the thoughts that stop you which means that you need to shut down this is the only time i will actually give you permission to shut down the people in your life that do not believe it's possible or don't talk to them anymore and but tell them at least have enough leadership to tell them the reason why i'm not going to share my visions and my goals with you anymore i'd have, I'd have that conversation with my mom at one point in my life i said you know the reason why i don't share my relationship stuff with you mom is because you always make me feel or the, the way that i feel is that when i share it with you you give me advice versus listening and all i want you to do is listen and i was like oh my god i'm so sorry i know why i do that i'm gonna stop that was i don't know eight years ago and now I can talk to my mom about relationship stuff, business stuff, and all she does is empower me. So sometimes people will change when you're actually honest with them because they don't realize what they're doing. Okay, back to the bucket list. Bucket list. So one million uh, in underprivileged kids. Um, cuddles. Sorry, that's my dog. See, I live a very real life. Cuddles, no. Okay, so um, I'm sitting here in my living room right now. So, um, so 200 opt-ins on a video summit that I'm going to do this year in, I think March we have it planned for, or May. Um, I'm doing an entrepreneurial church, which is basically the, we're going to have people of all different kinds of, kinds of faith, Jewish, Catholic, Christian, I'm Christian. Um, it's going to be all entrepreneurs who are very successful that will actually teach for free in the San Diego area. Uh, that is a vision. We are not going to take any of the profits from that. We're going to make it free so you can come like church, but we are going to ask you to tithe. Tithe money back into the community for coming and getting the education for free. And I'm very good at making offers and all my successful friends that will share the stage with me, they will have to be people of faith of any kind of faith. And it's my way of unifying religion. It's also my way of unifying entrepreneurship. It's also my way of showing that we can all live together. And it's just my secret little crusade with God with, you know, just giving back and, and unifying people, you know, and just doing it better than what I think is being done right now currently in the marketplace. So uh, we will ask people to tithe. We will a hundred percent donate that info, that, that money back into the community. Um, after the cost of the event is covered, which will be on bare bones, meaning that it won't be some elaborate event like I do for the zone event. Um, that our call center um, is doing what it's doing, that we have a repurposing department, um, that I have a baby, that um, my marriage is even more passionate, um, you know, 
I want to ride, I want to go, uh, I want to travel in private jets this year. Um, that uh, I have closer relationships with a couple people that I love and I'm really close with. Like I'm really close with Bedros, who owns Fit Body Boot Camp. But I want to spend more time with them this year, him and his wife. Um, so that I do a podcast or an interview with Joel Olstein this year. Um, you know, stuff like that. So uh, I did Inc. 5000 last year, but I want to make the Inc. 500 list, which I think I'll hit this year. Um, but that's still within my comfort zone, that we uh, get a building for hardcore business. Uh, you know, I want my belief is that I want the, the market to crash before I buy the building because I think the market's going to crash. Um, and however, I'm open to, I'm looking now in case we find a good distressed or a good deal that somebody wants to let go of a building and then I'll buy the building, which scares the shit out of me. Um, so I create that bucket list and that list has been created now two times. That's the second time it was created as I've reworked it, reworked it, reworked it. Um, I wish I would have grabbed the papers out of my office, but I often just use a wall size post-it and I write my goals for the year. I cover all of them but one and I go after it. However, this year I changed it. This year what I did was I created my vision board and it's not done yet. I'm going to finish it this morning. And I was like, ah, oh, I should have it done by the beginning of the year. Like I should have it done by, you know, start time. And it's like, it just didn't happen because my mom was here and I chose to spend time with my mom. So here's how you don't screw up when you, like here's how you don't get superstitious. Look, God is not superstitious. So, you know, do not be superstitious, okay? Don't do lucky numbers and all that type of stuff. Unless it's just something fun that you play with yourself, but don't, don't allow it to take you out of the game is what I'm saying, okay? If it's fun and you like it, fine. But um, it's not true. The lucky number is the way that you actually think inside your head and you manage your mind. So I didn't get this done today, but it will be done this morning now. Um, I have to put the building on here. I have to put Inc. 5000 or 500 on here. Um, there's a couple other things that I have to, that I have to put on here. Um, we're looking to put another 1,000 people in our PACE program this year, which, by the way, at that point, it already puts us at $21 million for the year. And we already, you know, did... Uh, we we did almost 10 million in contracted sales last year, and we brought in the door 7 million. So with that being said, all of that being said, just being transparent about like our coaching department, which is one of our companies, um, it being being transparent about that, um, the uh, the what was I going to say? I just lost my train of thought. The board is my way of just putting this up instead of the written words in front of my desk. So this will sit in front of my desk so that I can look at it all year and make sure that I don't lose track of what it is that I'm creating. Um, I don't have a fitness goal on there this year because I just don't have a challenge with fitness at this point in my life. It's, I just, I work out and everything's fine. So I don't really have a real fitness goal that's within my comfort zone. And I'm very happy with my fitness. So pick goals and aspirations that scare you. I could still up level this. I mean, I'm even sitting here. I can still up level this. Um, I listen to other people's planning. Like I listen to Grant Cardone's uh, planning, uh, which really he did a planning webinar, and I thought it was really great because he was his. So my strategy is always hitting your goals. His strategy is playing so big that like sometimes you hit it and sometimes you don't. And it was an aha moment listening to him because. You know, and this is what I mean by like, listen to people who have succeeded, like just listen to them. And, but it was an aha moment because I was like, yeah, I guess, you know, I double my company in size every year, which is a huge success. I mean, I've caught up with most of the people that are my friends have been in business for many, many, like Lisa Sasevich and Suzanne Evans, they've all been in business much longer than me. And we've caught up to their revenue and now are surpassing right? And maybe depending on whatever they do this year. But with that being said, um, it's like, I, I, I just, I look at the way that I plan and you plan and other people plan. And I look to make a tweak here and there. So with that being said, like doubling my company in size is within my comfort zone, even though it's a stretch. And I'm like, okay, like, you know, 
this is going to take some work, I'm still able to take off half a year and still hit those goals. So what would it look like if we played a little bit bigger this year? And that's what I'm going to be doing. So I'm going to sh be sharing with you tomorrow what I'm doing in 2019 to fail 19 times. In fact, if you go find me on YouTube, you can find the video that I did, but I'll actually, I'll actually post it in the comments section in a second, um, that I did a video that I am going to fail 19 times and I'm going to document it. And so you're going to hear me talk about this a lot. So you don't have to jump on the board today, but if you want to jump on the board with me today, comment, yes, I would like to jump on the board with you today. And what that means is that I am going to publicly fail as many times as I can because it drives me insane. How many people, even in my own community, I mean, I'm going to call up my community for a second that I coach. I mean, many of you guys have hit seven figures when four years ago you didn't have a business. You know, many of you guys have done six figures for the first time in six months in my PACE program or in 10 months in my PACE program, right? And this is not an income claim. I am not giving any income claims. The reason why not, not everybody hits that is because everybody somehow thinks, if I'm your coach, that I am responsible for you succeeding, which I'm not. You are responsible for you to tweak your mind to never give up and not even never give up, but to actually get more determined. You know, I told one of my clients like last year who didn't hit their goals that they weren't going to the zoo with their family because they were going to hit their goals. And that's because they got lackadaisical. So I am the coach that, that says have flex time. But the reason why you don't succeed often enough is honestly because you give up. And you don't think you do. Like you're telling yourself this lie that you don't give up because you're still in the game and working hard. No, if you let a goal go, you gave up. You gave up. You know, it took me a couple years to hit a million dollars, but that million dollars was literally my target for two years. Now I can do a million dollars in my sleep. And so can you if you change the way you think. So. I need to change the way you think about failure, about the way you think about yourself. So do you want to fail with me in 2019? Because I'm going to fail 19 times. At least I'm going to do my damn best, which means that every time I try and play in my comfort zone, I'm going to amp it up because I can't imagine what I might do with my company and my marriage and my parenting and all the things that I care about, all the things that I care about if, if, I set the intention to fail versus the intention to win. See, I've realized I've set the intention to win. That, that's been my game and I've won. But what if I set the intention to fail in the context of I win anyway? So if you want to play that game with me, you can go to YouTube. If you do go to YouTube and find me on YouTube, you can go find Hardcore Business on YouTube or Shanda Sumter on YouTube and go find that video, comment on the video. You have to go all the way to the bottom to comment. Comment on that video, and then let's play this game together. You're going to hear me talk about it a lot. All right, you guys, I went five minutes over this morning. Sorry, normally these are 20 minutes. If this was a good uh, live for you, I ask for you to comment. I ask for you to tag somebody. Share this. If you guys are watching on Facebook, share this. Um, and I will see you tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Pacific. Let's rock 2019.